Well, folks, in today's video, we visit Larkspur Line train store in Merrickville, Ontario. This is a train store which I like to visit pretty often. I'm probably up here about once every four months, and I was really excited to get to stop by here today because I found out that the store had recently acquired a whole bunch of different estate sales. Now, out of these estate sales, the store had already organized some of the stuff and put it up on shelves. But the rest of it was still all packed away in boxes, and I had absolutely no idea what could be inside. The shop owner was really nice, he let me look through the boxes, and what I ended up finding was absolutely incredible. So let me take you all on a tour of the store, and I'll show you all what exactly it is I ended up seeing here. Now, as per usual, we begin our tour in the consignment section. I can't say I saw too many new items in here, a lot of this stuff I've definitely seen before. They had a couple new passenger cars, but that was pretty much it. Outside the consignment section, however, there were some treasures kind of hidden away, including this really nice looking Kato locomotive being sold as a project. It was missing its handrails and some other parts, but with a little bit of work it could be a fantastic looking locomotive. They also had a blue box Canadian Pacific locomotive being sold as a project, and it looked to have what I believe is an older style of decoder. Over in the locomotive display case, they had a whole bunch of new HO scale locomotives, mostly from Canadian railroads in a variety of different paint schemes. I think that most of the engines in this display case are used, but everything in here is in terrific condition, and uh, there were a lot of engines which really caught my eye. They also had a whole bunch of passenger cars from Rapido. The majority of them were Canadian National, but they did have a couple of VIA ones as well. Over here is kind of like the store's secondary consignment section. It's not terribly different from the first one, but everything here tends to have a box. They had things like this Project Locomotive going for $30 with a decoder, and uh, one of my buddies actually ended up buying that locomotive. And just below that, they had this Lionel Canadian Pacific locomotive. I'm suspecting this is one of the Bachman era ones with the pancake motor, but I'm not 100% sure. Down here, they had a whole bunch of passenger car kits for the Pennsylvania Railroad, which looked pretty sharp. And then just a box with a whole bunch of miscellaneous freight cars. Nothing too special, but I always enjoy having a look. And then I found this thing. It's a daylight locomotive from Bachman, or Lionel, which somebody has painted black and added a Canadian National logo to. I've seen some weird things, you know, odd projects people have created, but that is very unusual. I don't know why somebody would have made that. But in any case, I just decided to keep on looking. Yeah, it was pretty much more of the same, just random passenger cars, things like that. Uh, they also had this Champion box car, which I thought looked pretty sharp. I didn't end up buying that, but if it's there next time I go, I might just end up snagging it. I don't know. Over here is the store's section for high-end, brand new locomotives. I don't usually buy too many things like this, but I did really like this Sioux Line AB set. Now by this point, I'd pretty much looked through the entire store, and that's when I started to notice that they had a whole bunch of different boxes. So I asked if I could go through all of it, and uh, the first thing I saw was that, just a whole bunch of junk H.O. scale locomotives, mostly from lifelike Tyco and Bachman. They would all definitely need some work before they could ride the rails once again. Yeah, that one random Mantua Tyco locomotive. But then over here I started to find some slightly more unusual stuff, and the second I saw this I knew I just had to unwrap it and see what exactly was inside. And what, you know, it turned out to be was a project which somebody clearly sunk a lot of time into. This was built out of a kit. It's a Hobby Town locomotive, all die cast. Uh, the paint works a little glossy, but again, considering somebody made that themselves, it's pretty impressive in my opinion. They also had this River Rossi steam locomotive, which looked to be in pretty good shape. No idea if it ran or not. They had this one random Lionel Santa Fe switcher locomotive. And then I found something I really was not expecting to see. It's a 2882 steam locomotive from River Rossi, and the store actually had two of those, which was just kind of mind-boggling. And then below that, they had some really nice looking Ontario Northern locomotives. This one was a dummy, but they had two powered models as well. Those look absolutely fantastic. 
and then uh, here's the other 282 and then this box really caught my eye it just said locomotives on it and i was not expecting to see this check it out a whole bunch of unfinished 1950s die cast locomotives now some of these are you know in really rough condition they're far from completed but in and amongst the rough in this box there were a couple of really nice locomotives which i'll show you in a second here so they had this one this one was you know fairly complete but then i found something which i was just really struck by just check this thing out it's such a rough locomotive and uh, I gotta say, I just kind of liked something about it. It's almost got like a, a bit of a, a creepy look to it, but uh, I, I just thought that was a really cool locomotive, and it had most of its parts. This one was pretty uncompleted. However, I think it has a 7-pull motor. I think that's a Lindsay Super motor, which Varney used to use, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Well, I am uh, now obviously home, and I have uh, quite the haul of different HO scale locomotives, which I am very eager to show all of you as well as test out, because I don't have a clue if any of these things even run. So to start off, uh, I guess I'll start with the kind of like less exciting stuff. And uh, remember that bin that uh, I referred to in the video? Uh, here it all is. Now, uh, I know what you might be thinking, you know, this is just an irresponsible amount of locomotives to buy, and uh, you'd be right, but I didn't buy them. Uh, you know, these are all junk locomotives, and uh, I basically said to the store uh, owner there, I was like, hey, if you want, I'll fix them all up and bring them back, because in their current state, they don't really serve any good to anybody. So I'll bring them here, fix them all up, uh, bring them back to him, he can sell them all off, and somebody can enjoy these locomotives once again. And uh, I'll show you all, you know, what they all are. We got uh, a Bachman Canadian National, I think it's a GP40, a uh, Canadian Pacific one. This is in really rough condition. I don't know if we'll be able to get that one going again, but we'll see. We got uh, a Tyco uh, Century 430 locomotive, I believe it is. Some sort of uh, an F unit from Canadian National. Got a Canadian Pacific F unit of some sort, um, an identical one, and uh, we got this lifelike kind of military locomotive. All very unusual, but uh, honestly, it all looks a lot better because this was all separated at the store, and I was able to get most of these engines at least back into one piece. So it's a solid start. So that's what uh, I first kind of got. But now uh, on to what I actually did buy, and uh, I am very eager to show all of you. Check this out. Yep, I decided to buy the Daylight Locomotive. I know that it is such a strange locomotive and so unprototypical, and maybe to some, you know, Southern Pacific fans this is, like, not nice, but, uh, I don't know. I just thought it was uh, something kind of unusual. It apparently doesn't run, and I'd believe it because uh, if this is what I think it is, this is secretly a Bachman locomotive, even though it's uh, all Lionel. And if that's the case, uh, that's not actually very good news for this thing because uh, the Bachman engines from the 80s are uh, not great runners. They had a huge problem with nylon gear splitting and stuff, so this one might have a binding issue, but I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Here it is uh, outside of the box. I mean, it's a, it's a good looking locomotive because it's a daylight. It's just strange, strange paint scheme. So uh, yeah, there it is. The Canadian Pacific Daylight Locomotive. I don't know. It was just unusual. I kind of liked it, so I decided to buy it and take my chances on this engine. We'll see if I can actually get it running again, though. Who knows? And then finally, I think it's kind of predictable what I decided to buy, but here it is. Yep. It's what I think's a Varney locomotive. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I just couldn't help myself with this thing. It's just super, you know, cool, unusual locomotive. Uh, I don't have a crazy amount of stuff like this in my collection, and uh, I just decided to buy it in untested condition. Uh, I paid uh, 50 bucks for it, which, you know, it wasn't dirt cheap, but uh, I threw in this tender, which is all brass, and this also has some brass parts. I, I think it's mostly die cast, but still, uh, it, it looked like a really nice locomotive, and uh, I really wanted it, so we'll see. Hopefully it will run once again. I can already tell by the headlight this is actually a high mileage locomotive because that's got some burn on it. So it's definitely been run a lot, but uh, that might just mean it's broken in. I don't know. Now, why don't we bring all these engines over to the track and see if any of them will do anything. Because again, I don't have a clue if any of these run or not. 
Let's find out. Well, all of these are all ready to be tested. I'm not really sure where to start. I guess we'll just pick one up and see if she'll go. Uh, this is one of the Bachmans with a pancake motor. As you can see, it's not in great shape. That does not necessarily mean it won't run. And these were all in a junk bin, so I don't know what, uh, if the stores tried to test them or not, but well, right off the bat, we got a short circuit. And yeah, that's not changing, so there's something miswired in this engine, but these are really straightforward engines in terms of wiring, so I don't think that's going to be hard to fix. Might be a good thing, actually, because if it's just a wiring issue, the motor and stuff might be okay. Yeah, this is another Bachman from about the 1970s, I believe. This is actually uh, an all-wheel drive locomotive, if you can believe it, despite being older than the uh, other one. I don't know if this one's gonna go. These things tend to be prone to having uh, motor issues, I find, and a couple other issues which I'll get to in a moment with these, but let's see if, uh, let's see if she'll do anything. Okay. We have a uh, nice bright working headlight, and I heard, I heard something from the motor just a second ago, but it doesn't seem to wanna start now. Oh, yeah, okay, that woke it up. Like I said, these things are uh, quite commonly prone to motor issues. So, I wouldn't call it hopeless because, you know, it, it did move a little bit, but yeah, it's going to need some work. That's to be expected. Now, this is also an all wheel drive locomotive. This has the exact same drive. However, this one's in way worse shape, and the reason I think this one's going to be a real challenge is because uh, if you take that off, that's got zinc pest, and uh, a lot of these Bachman engines from the 70s, what unfortunately happens is uh, this uh, they develop zinc pest, and the metal expands, and it actually destroys the shell, which it looks like it might have done to this one a little bit. So that piece of metal will definitely have to go. The question is whether or not all the other stuff is still okay or not, so I guess we'll just try to get it on this truck. Give it some power. Maybe the motor will go, who knows. Yeah, the motor runs. So, obviously it's not hooked up to this because it's missing the little uh, piece of metal there, but that's actually better than I expected. So, worst comes to worst, we got probably a good frame in this one, and Maybe spare parts out of this one? I don't know. I mean, the goal will be to get as many running as possible. Let's try to run the lifelike. Uh, these are not horrible engines in terms of their motors, but uh, these gears tend to have issues. So if there's something wrong with this one, that's where my money is at. Let's see. Yeah. Right on cue, so. It's going to need some work. Hopefully the gears aren't stripped, but that's a very common problem with these uh, first generation lifelikes, which I think were actually built out of Varney locomotives, but kind of watered down. I don't know. They had issues. Now, uh, I don't know. I think this one's got a good chance. It's got the pancake drive. Not a fantastic motor, but it might just go. Let's see here. Hmm. That's very unusual for this kind of drive. Motors sounds very good actually, but uh, probably a broken gear would be my guess. Mm, this one's, I think, also got a pancake motor. Let's give her a test here. No current draw. Crank the power all the way up. Yeah, this one's got an electrical issue. Probably nothing too serious. I think that uh, if I were to take a guess somewhere in there, there's probably a solder joint for one of the wires that goes to the motor. It's probably broken. Happens all the time on these older engines. Uh, here's the Tyco. Power torques are uh, a thing on themselves, but let's let's test it out. Hmm. 
Something already doesn't seem quite right just about how it's sitting there. Yeah, that's not doing anything. So there are both those. Now onto the engines that I actually bought. The engine uh, doesn't need the tender to run because it's all plastic wheels. So we'll just set it up as is. That very well might have a binding issue. Huh, well we have a working headlight. Nothing from the motor. So it's picking up power, because the light's getting powered, but the motor's not doing anything. I'm not hearing anything. And we have low current draw, so it's not picking up power. So it's not actually the issue I suspected this would have, unless somebody, maybe this seized and somebody burned the motor right out of it. I don't know. Something's not quite right there, obviously, but that's to be expected. Now onto this one. I think it's actually got a decent shot now. I don't know, we might leave the tender out of the equation. We'll just try to hook it directly to the track. These old Varney engines are, are pretty tough. Like, I don't think it's gonna run perfectly if it does, but let's try it out. So I'm putting power in the track, nothing so far. Heard something for a second there. Okay, let's try this. Let's give it more power. Yeah, it's, it's trying to go. Ooh, that does not look good. I'm gonna try to run it the other direction, just try to fix that. It, it needs some adjustment, but yeah, this thing runs. It's funny, because out of all the locomotives you see here, this one is undoubtedly the oldest of the bunch, and it technically runs, despite maybe being a seven-year-old engine. Um, that's pretty cool. So anyways, that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.